Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome once again uh, to this session of the Word of the Lord, where the Bible says we must teach and preach. We have this as a, a scripture in this assembly, Gospel Assembly Church in Okuru, where Jesus said that we preach and teach the gospel of the kingdom. Or some, sometimes we will teach, other times we will preach. And this is because it has been commanded uh, to us uh, by Jesus Christ because even he himself, uh, he went everywhere preaching the word of the Lord and also teaching uh, the word of the Lord. And that is uh, uh, the quality of a New Testament uh, assembly uh, that we must teach and preach this gospel of the kingdom. And also again in the book of uh, uh, the Acts, the twenty. 8th chapter and first number 31, the Bible say, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concerns of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we sometimes would preach and other times would teach the word of the Lord. And I'm so grateful that God has enabled me, has called me you know, not only to teach, but also to preach the gospel of the kingdom. And maybe... Uh, today I may slow a little bit because I want to respond to some questions, uh, some saints of God, some individuals watching us, us through the social media. I wanted to be clear, to have clarification and answers to some questions. And the question was, why should God permit uh, there to be evil among the godly? Why should God permit uh, there to be a virus, a calamity among his people? And uh, uh, so it's a question uh, that why should God uh, make the righteous uh, suffer, uh, go through experiences that are so discouraging, experiences sometimes that are so painful, and yet they are the people of God. And I would like to uh, slowly and uh, calmly maybe uh, go through facets of scriptures. I may not give all the scriptures that are are there to support what I'm saying, but I'll give a few. We go to get through together uh, the word of the Lord. Uh, so we have, uh, Jesus said, there's some people that have not been given to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. Uh, there's some people, it doesn't matter how much time we spend explaining the word of the Lord. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter, and verse number 11, uh, they were concerned. They were asking Jesus Christ, why is he talking to some people in parables? And uh, the reason why they felt like it was being spoken to them in parables is because they could not understand. Uh, they could not understand. They could not comprehend uh, what Jesus was talking. And Jesus answered and said, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, 
uh, but to them it is not given. So you'll find uh, there are some individuals that God has touched their hearts to know the mysteries of the kingdom, to understand the truth, to understand the word of God when it is being explained uh, by the men of God, when it is being expounded uh, by the men of God. Uh, but to others, it has not been given. So I do pray that you be among them uh, that God has given uh, to know the mysteries of the kingdom and to understand. Uh, Paul praying and talking to Timothy, he said to Timothy in 2 Timothy, the second chapter, I believe verse number 7, uh, he said, consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. And my prayer is that God will give you understanding in all things that you are going to stalk like here, uh, because there is that concern even among God's people. And they are questioning God, why should I go through this? Why should I go uh, through these experiences? I believe in you. I have my faith in you. I have served you all these years. And why do you permit this to happen? And the Bible say in the book of uh, Job, Job talking to his wife, because his wife also felt like, why can't you cast this God and we die? Verse number nine of the book of Job, the second chapter. And the Bible said, then said his wife unto him, does thou still retain thy integrity? And you'll find a child of God may start losing their confidence. They may start losing their faith in God, uh, depending on what they are going through, the experiences, uh, the suffering, the pain. And you'll find this child of God is like their hope is almost gone. Uh, their confidence is almost gone. Their trust in God is almost eroded uh, because of the experiences that they are going through, because of the suffering uh, that they are going through, and they feel like if God then delays, uh, then you'll find uh, this child of God's uh, uh, faith in God. Uh, the book of, uh, quickly before we finish with Job, in the book of uh, uh, Psalms, the that 73rd chapter, and I said I'll go slowly, and we are studying through the word of God. I'm not preaching, but I'm responding to a question from a child of God that felt like it is vain to serve God. Uh, why have I gone through what I'm going through and yet I have uh, served God faithfully? And the Bible says even uh, David had come to that level. But he said, uh, uh, Psalms the that, 70, that chapter and verse number one, he said, truly God is God, good to Israel, even to such as of clean heart. But he said, verse number two, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. He almost lost faith in God. He almost lost his trust and his confidence in, in God. And he said, my, step, my steps had well nigh slept. In other words, he, must, he felt like he was almost giving up. He was envious, verse number three. He was envious at the foolish because he found out the people that are even don't serve God, that don't commit themselves to the Lord, they are more prosperous. Uh, they are more peaceful. It's like as though they look as though maybe they are more uh, peaceful, they are more blessed to the Lord than the godly. And he said, I was envious at the foolish. He said, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, and this is a child of God that have served God, that have lived in the church faithfully, and they, the more they serve God, they feel things are becoming more difficult, things are becoming more hard, things are becoming more tougher for them. The more they give in their tithes and their offerings, and even they, uh, they, 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 they fast and pray. But he said, but as for me, I was envious for the foolish at the foolish, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And that is a child of God asking me a question. I feel discouraged. I feel uh, disappointed. I feel like I want to give up on God because uh, why am I going through this? And the wife of Job was in that state in the book of, back in the book of Job, the second chapter, she was in that state. She felt like it was, it was vain. Uh, to serve God. She felt what is the use of living a righteous life, of going to church, of being a Christian and professing to be a child of God, and yet I'm suffering even more than the ungodly, even more than the wicked. And Job's wife said, do you still retain your integrity? 
And this is a child of God who is asking me, do I still keep on coming to church uh, through our uh, social platform? Uh, it says asking uh, through, they listen to the word of God and they're asking, well, then why should I serve God? I'm suffering uh, through even this calamity that is going through uh, in the world. I'm also suffering. I'm also feeling the pain. I cannot even put food on the table. So what is the point of going to church and what is the point of retaining my integrity? And she said, advice giving to her husband, uh, curse God and we die. Uh, he said, why can't we curse God and we die? And look, look at the, 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 uh, the answer of Job in Job, uh, the second chapter and verse number 10. But he said unto her, you speak as one of the foolish women speaketh. You know, when an individual starts questioning the existence of God and uh, the integrity of God and, uh, you know, uh, start questioning why should God do this? Why should God take me through this? He said, what? Uh, shall, we not, shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In other words, Job is saying, uh, from the hand of the Almighty God, uh, we can still receive good. And at the same time, from the hand of God, we can still receive evil. In other words, God is in charge of everything that is happening, whether good or evil. Uh, it is not the devil. It is not uh, our enemies. It is not men. Uh, but it is God who is in charge. And you as a child of God listening to me. And I pray and I, I hope that you are listening when I'm answering to your question. Uh, that, that God is in charge of everything. Uh, Job is saying, shall we, uh, shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In other words, from uh, the hand of the Lord, uh, there is also good and there is also evil. God is in charge. Uh, God is in charge of everything uh, that happeneth uh, in the universe. And it happens that even when calamity comes, uh, when danger comes, uh, when, uh, uh, when, uh, when good things come, and uh, the Bible says in the book of uh, Lamentation of Jeremiah, the third chapter, and first number 37, uh, the Bible says, Who is he that saith? And it come to pass when the Lord commanded it not. Uh, as a child of God, you should know that. That is your confidence. There is no man that can say anything, no evil, no calamity, no good thing that can come uh, your way. Uh, in your life, if God has not commanded it. First number 38, the Bible is saying, Out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good. In his equation, he said, Out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good. In other words, you'll find God is in church. Uh, whether it is calamity coming, whether it is evil coming, uh, then the Bible is saying, We must understand that instead of complaining, first number 39, instead of complaining, we should be able to wait upon the Lord. Uh, God is in charge of whatever is happening in your life. When you lose your job, when you lose your health, God is in charge of it. Uh, it is not your director, it is not your employer, it is not your enemy who is in charge of it. What you need to understand is that God is in charge of every situation. So the Bible says, Wherefore, Lamentation 3, 39, Wherefore does the living man complain, and man for the punishment of his sins? In other words, the Bible says they are not a cause. God is bringing that for a reason. Uh, there is something that God wants to achieve. Uh, you may not be a sinner, but through what you are going through, God may want to teach a lesson to somebody else. God may use you as a reason why somebody will trust in God in a greater way. And not because you have sinned maybe against God, and not because you are more evil and more wicked, but God has permitted it to bring somebody who knows you, and somebody will see what you'll go through to their understanding and to know that indeed God is in church. And so you'll find now in the book of Nahum, the first chapter of the book of Nahum and verse number three, uh, here is a Bible. The Bible is saying, uh, the Lord is slow to anger. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. I would wish 
And I pray that you have your Bible with you. We may go through several verses of scriptures, uh, some statements that we are going to say, and I would like you to prove them uh, through the word of God. Don't just be uh, there just taking everything that I say. Uh, you can counter check what I'm saying and what I'm uh, leading uh, through your Bible. Be like them that were of Thessalonica. Uh, the Bible is saying they were, uh, they were uh, in the book of, uh, if I can quickly encourage you to read uh, the word of God in the book of Acts, uh, the 17th chapter, verse number 10, uh, the Bible is saying, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Cyrus by night unto Berea, uh, and to uh, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. So these two brethren, uh, Paul and Cyrus, were sent by the brethren, and they went to Berea. But when they went to Berea, the Bible says, uh, who went to Berea? The Bible says, verse number 11, uh, they say, these were more noble than those in the Salonica. The Berean, the saints of God in Berea, were more noble, and I like, and I pray that you be noble this time. We are going through the word of God. Why and what was making them to be noble is that in that they received the word with all leadiness of mind. And I like you to have leadiness of mind. As we go through the scriptures, as we answer this question from a child of God, asking why should God permit? Is really God in this? Is it really God in this calamity? Is it really God in this what I'm going through? So I want you to have the lateness of mind. And the Bible say, and they search the scriptures daily. To know whether those things that Apostle Paul and Cyrus were preaching were so. They, they, they wanted to verify, to confirm, and to ascertain that indeed the scriptures that Apostle Paul was leading and the things that he was saying were supported by the word of God. And I'd like to urge you to take your Bible, take your notebook, and then we go through together. So back to the book of uh, uh, Nahum, uh, the first chapter and verse number three. And the Bible is saying, the Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquaint the wicked. This is what you need to understand. Uh, that God will not acquaint the wicked at all. The Lord have his way. Now this is the word. This is what I want to say here. The Lord have his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. Whatever you're going through. Whatever is happening on the face of the earth. God have his way. Whether it's a virus. Whether it's a calamity. Whether it's a war. God has his way. God has his way in the storm. And I would like you to have at the back of your mind as we go through the verses of scriptures that God has his way in the storm. Whether it's the storm of uh, suffering, whatever storm it could be, God has his way in it. It doesn't matter in the book of uh, Psalms, the 89th chapter and verse number 9, the Bible is saying, God ruleth, God, thou lulest the legion of the sea. We are talking about the storm. We are talking about a calamity. We are talking about sickness. We are talking about diseases. Uh, things that could be happening that are so discouraging, so painful, and so hurting. In your life, the Bible is saying, God lulest. Thou lulest the legion of the sea. When the waves thereof arise, thou have the power to steal them. So God has the authority, God has the power and rulership over everything that happens in the life of a child of God. Again, in the book of Psalms 90, that chapter and verse number 4, the Bible is saying the Lord is high, uh, the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. So God is mightier, so the Lord have his way in the storm. So the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. So it doesn't matter what storm, it doesn't matter what wind is blowing your way, God still have his way right there. God still have his way in that storm, God has his way in that calamity, God have his way in that virus, God has his way in that pain. Whatever is happening on the face of the earth, God is leaning. 
So we as children of God, we need to understand, and I'm addressing you that I asked this question, that God is in charge. The first thing you need to understand is that nothing happens without his command. Nothing happens without his permission. And the fact that he has permitted it, it is because he has control over it. He is the one in charge. He is the one that is ruling. He is the one that is leaning. He is the one that is in charge. So God leaneth. God leaneth in the storm. God have his way in the storm. So Psalms 107, chapter and verse number 25 again, the Bible says, For he commandeth and lazeth the storm, the stormy wind. So that stormy wind in your life could not have touched you, could have not been a reason if God never commanded it. Uh, that sickness, that virus, that war or that calamity, whatever it is that is uh, uh, bogging you down, that is taking you through experiences, God is in church. Uh, so he commandeth, who can say anything and it come to pass if the Lord commandeth it not. So that storm, that stormy wind in your life, uh, that, uh, uh, that valley that you are going through, that uh, waters that you are going through, that fire that you are going through, God commanded it. He commanded and laseth the stormy sea wind. In other words, that stormy wind is as it were, it have ears. Whatever it is, whether calamity or sickness, it have ears and it can hear the voice of God. It can respond to the bidding of God. It can respond to the call of God. The sea can become uh, naturally, but for there to be waves, it is because God has commanded a, a wind to disturb the calmness of the sea. And your life may be calm, but for there to be some stormy wind, God commanded it. God commandeth, for he commandeth and lazeth the stormy wind which lifteth up the waves thereof. In other words, that sea is come. Your life can become, the world can become, and all of a sudden, God command a stormy wind that is called a virus, and there is waves. The sea of the calmness of the sea is disturbed. God, there can be calmness in your family. There can be calmness in your, in your business. There can be calmness. And God just command a stormy wind lie there. And all the calmness is taken away. But remember, God have his way in that storm. God have his way in that stormy wind. So that stormy wind could not have reason if God had not commanded it. As a child of God, I'm saying we have to understand this so, so that we can know that God is in total and complete control of every situation. God is in total and complete control of every event. Whether it is happening to a man or to a nation, the Bible says. Whether it is done to a man or to a nation, God is in church. Or to a world, the whole world, God is in church. He is in total and complete control. So as a child of God, when somebody is saying, why then is God permitting? If he is still on the throne, is it that he is losing battle? Is it that he is losing influence? Is it that he is losing his authority? No. Whatever is happening in your life or in the universe, God is in charge of it. God is aware of it. God has permitted it. God has commanded it. He commanded it and lays it the stormy wind which lifted up the waves thereof. So you'll find as a child of God, we then need to understand that, that God is in total and complete control of every situation. So the world may be peaceful, your life may be peaceful, but God can just command a little wind, a stormy wind to blow. And, and, and I'm reminded of the story of Jonah. Uh, Jonah, in the book of Jonah, the first chapter, Jonah is sent by God to go to Nineveh and go and preach. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Now here is a child of God like you, called of God, a prophet, a preacher, called of God, and he is sent to go and preach 
in Nineveh to go and preach and turn these people from their wickedness uh, so that God's wrath can be stayed. And Jonah, verse number three, the Bible said, but Jonah lost up to free unto Tashish from the presence of the Lord. Now, this is a man that have been sent by God. He, he is told, I want you to go to Nineveh uh, to go and preach this gospel. To go and let the children of Nineveh turn from their wicked way. Uh, so you'll find, now instead of this man going to Nineveh, he de decided to go to another place. Uh, he doesn't want to follow God. He doesn't want to obey the call of God over his life. He doesn't want to follow the command of God over his life. And Jonah felt he can run away from God. And Jonah thought that God was only in Israel. He thought that is where the presence of God was. If he goes to another place, God was not there. He felt and he thought that God was only confined into one place called Israel. So he thought if he goes to Nineveh or he goes to Tashish, God will not get him there. So as a child of God, you'll find now this is a man under the command of God. But he is learning away from God. He is even ready to pay any cost. And he paid his fare to go and he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tashish. And he paid fare. He is led to learn away from God. But remember, he cannot learn away from God because God is omnipresence. He, he is everywhere. He cannot learn away from God. David said in Psalms 139 and verse number 7, the Bible is saying, Where shall I go from thy spirit? Or where shall I flee from thy presence? Remember, Jonah is learning away from the presence of God. He thought, God was confined in Israel. Verse number 8, the Bible is saying, If I descend, up, ascend up into heaven, he said, Thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, he said, Behold, thou art there. Verse number 9, If I take the wings of the morning, and I dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, verse number 10, even there, the uttermost part of the sea, underline that because Jonah will find God there. God is in the storm. God have his way in the storm. And Jonah found that he can go to Tarshish and run away from God, thinking that God is confined in Israel. He said, even there shall thine hand lead me. And thy light hand shall hold me in the sea. Verse number nine. In the sea. In the uttermost part of the sea. And now Jonah, he got himself a fare, a ticket, to go to Tashish. And all what he is doing, he is learning a way to go from them. He said, he said so he paid the fare back to Jonah chapter one, verse number three. He paid the fare thereof and went down in, into it to go with them unto Tashish from the presence of the Lord. But he did know that he cannot learn away from God. I, I'm saying this to say, child of God, God have his way in the storm, in the calamity, in the virus, in the war. In that pain, God has his way. God will have his way there. And Jonah, he goes to the outermost part of the sea and he is thinking he is learning away from God. Verse number four, the Bible says, but when they were in the greater seas, when they were in the deep seas, on his way to Tarshish, but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. Remember, the sea was come. There was calmness in the sea, but God commanded a stormy wind. God sent a wind lie there where Jonah was. God commanded a, 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 a stormy wind, and the Lord sent a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea. 
So you find as a child of God, that tempest that you could feel you are going through, God is in it. These people felt like they wondered what is happening. And remember, you're talking of men that had the experience, men that knew the light time to go on a voyage in the sea, the calmest time to sail, they understood all this. But so that was the light time for them to sail. It was the light time for them to be in the sea. But light at that time they felt and they thought it was the calmest time God was there. And God is, has sent a, a, a wind, a stormy wind. Jonah is running away from God when everything was calm. Because when he was being given instruction, he was calm, God was calm, everything was cool, uh, he was listening to God. And, and, and lie there, uh, you know, when he is listening to God in calmness, he refused to obey God in calmness. He refused, Jeremiah said, in Jeremiah the 12th chapter and verse number 5, he said, if thou hast learned with the footmen, and Jonah, when he was in Israel, is as though he was listening out with God, like men fighting and ch being challenged by footmen. And he, he ran away. God is saying, I'm giving you instruction in calmness. There's no fight. There's no war. I just want you to rise up and you go to Nineveh and you preach to that people. That is calmness. Footmen. No quarrel. No fight. And the Bible is saying, now if thou have learned with the footmen and they have wailed thee, they have worn you out. He said, then how can you contend with the horseman? Now the horseman is the stormy wind. This is a child of God that I have listened to God. God giving them instruction in calmness. God giving them, them instruction in quietness. When the sea is come, their life is come, but they have been wailed. They have been worn out. They can't walk with God. They can't put up. So he ran away. So the question is, now the horsemen have come. Are you going to contend with the horsemen? And the horsemen is God commanding the stormy wind. And now this man by the name of jo Jonah, he is learning from the presence of God. And he thinks and he thought that God is confined to Israel, to Jerusalem. When you get out of the boundaries of Israel, then God loses track of you. No. God is in charge. God is in control, complete and total control, control over every happening in the universe and even in your life. So Jonah thought it was just business as usual. The sailors thought it was as business as usual. And God sent a, out a great wind into the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea and their sheep so that the sheep was like to be broken it was so tempest it was so great these seasoned experienced accustomed uh, uh, sailors they felt the weight they felt the threat they felt the threat. They felt, no, something has to, be, has to be done. God is in charge. God has his way in the storm. And I want you listening to me. And I hope you are listening to me. And every one of you that is listening to me, it doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter what you feel should not be happening. God is in it. It doesn't matter what you feel. It is so painful. God is in it. God, and he is in it for a cause. He is in it for a reason. He is in it for a purpose. Praise the name of the Lord. So God brings these. He is in charge. And I would like to put a statement like there and say, God is in this stormy wind, not only to punish the wicked, but he is also in this stormy wind to direct his people to his course to direct his people to the way that they should go 
God is in this stormy wind, number two, to make sure he manifests his people before the ungodly. He reveals to the ungodly who are his people. You, you find out God in the book of, uh, in the book of Malachi, the third chapter and verse number 18. The Bible is saying, verse number 17 of the book of Malachi, the that, the that chapter, then, shall, shall, then, 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 and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make up my jewels. And you know how jewels are made? They are made through much pressure, much beating, and fire. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Now, God is in charge. God is having his way in the storm to make sure, not only to judge and to punish the wicked, but to reveal his people to the wicked. That this is my son. This is my child. And also to direct his people. To bring them to the cause. Verse number 18. And after the storm is over, then you shall return. After the stormy wind is over, you shall return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Because the stormy wind is going to destroy the wicked. But the righteous will be preserved. So you will return and observe and discern between the righteous and the wicked. And between them that serve God and them that serve him not. So here is a man by the name of Josh, Jonah. God is in that stormy wind. He is the one who has, to, who has sent. He commanded the stormy wind and laces it up. So he gives a bidding. And the wind disturbs the sea. And the, and the, and the ship is tossed. What is he saying? God is in it. He has his way in it. God has his way in the stormy wind. God has his way in the tempest. God is there. And all what God wants is to manifest himself. And sometimes it can be stormy. Sometimes it can be great. Sometimes it can until this child of God. And you are right. You are right to ask, is really God in it? Is really God with me? You are justified to ask that. And that is why I'm giving you an answer saying, yes, God is with you and God is in it. Whatever it is that you're going through. Whatever it is that you feel it is too painful, that you feel you can't understand. Whatever it is, God is in it. Don't, guess, don't backslide, my brother. Don't backslide. Don't give up on God. Wait on God. He is coming. When the storm, when he achieves what you want to achieve in it, the storm will be over. In the book of uh, the same, you find the same, almost the same story in the book of Acts, the 27th chapter, verse number 17. And the Bible says, and when they had taken up, they, they used helps under guarding the sheep and feeling that the, lest they should fall into the quicksand, stake sail, and so were driven. Verse number 18. And we being exceedingly toast with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship until they started now throwing some necessities out of the ship, the food they wanted, the medicine they would have relied on. They started throwing out, no, not knowing that God is in it. God was in it. Verse number 19, the Bible is saying, And on the that day we cast out our own hands, the, the tackling of the sheep. Verse number 20 is what I want. And when neither, now look at that, it was so great, so strong, that neither sun nor the stars appeared in many days. They lost the count of days. They didn't know even what day it was. They didn't know whether it was night or during the day because the sun could not come and the stars could not come. Because when you're in the high seas, what guides you to know what time it is is the star and the sun. You see the star when it is that night. You see the sun when it's during the day. Now they could see nothing. Day and night were the same. And here is a child of God going through a storm. Like maybe you have gone or you may be 
in the storm where you even your life loses meaning sense of dilection when there is no moon and there is no star and there is no sun you lose dilection because when you see the sun you know the sun rises from the east to the west so you know which direction you are, you, are, you are facing. But when the sun is not there, you don't know. Your life loses meaning and direction. You don't even know your surrounding. You don't know where you're going. As a child of God, remember you're a child of God. And God has sent a stormy wind that have darkened your life, blinded you. You don't see, you don't, so, you don't know which way to go. Because the sun gives you direction. The star tells you whether it's day or night. Now the, the star and the, the suns are not there. They don't appear many, many, many days. Praise the name of the Lord. This, I'm answering a question and I know even you, even if you didn't answer this question, you are also benefiting from this. You are also healing this to know that it doesn't matter how dark your state is right now. God is in charge. God is in it. You say, I, I don't even know. I don't, have you ever heard somebody say, my life doesn't make any meaning, not any sense at all. How are you doing? I don't know. Where are you going? I don't know. Who are you? I don't know. I have lost the sense of living or belonging. I don't even know anything at all. There's a storm that is hitting your life. But in that storm, my brother, God is in it. In that storm, my sister, God is in it. And God will have his way in that storm. God will have his way in that storm. It doesn't matter how dark it is. It doesn't matter how deep it is. It doesn't matter how blinded you are, you feel. I am reminded of the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter, and verse number 21, when God told Moses, and the Lord and the people, verse number, verse number, verse number 20, the Bible is saying, and, and, and the Lord, and, and Moses said unto the people, fear God. For God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces that you sin not. Now, that darkness, that it is to put some fear of God in you. Verse number 21. It says, and the people stood afar off, and Moses drew nigh unto the people, and to the, and drew nigh unto the thick darkness Wherefore God was, he is saying that God is speaking uh, to these people and he is standing. Exodus the 10th chapter and verse number 21. Verse number 21. And the Lord spake unto Moses. He said, stretch out thine hand toward heaven. That there may be darkness over the land of Egypt. And you know what he said? Even darkness which may be felt darkness that you can touch have you ever felt darkness even when you are walking in the night as a child of god back in the village countryside where there is no right street rights and there's no star there is no moon that darkness that you feel like everything is the same whether you close your eyes or you open your eyes doesn't make no difference have you ever been in that darkness at night physically that you say no need even opening your eyes because whether you open them or you close them the the, the sight is the same they doesn't make no difference and god is saying to moses stretch forth your hand towards heaven and there are going to be darkness that can be felt to where you feel like you can touch that darkness and that is a life of a child of god in total darkness verse number 21 verse number 22 and moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven and there was a thick darkness in all the land of egypt three days three days three days uh, paul is saying three days they had stayed in that total darkness they lost at one point they lost count of days because they didn't even know first number 23 and the bible say and they 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 saw not one another look at that it doesn't matter how close they were in the same house, but they could not see each other for three good days, day and night. 
And your life become as though you are in total darkness. Whether you close your eyes, whether you open them, it doesn't make no difference. In other words, your life is as though it has lost meaning. Where do, what do you want in life? I don't know. What are your goals in life? I don't know. What do you want to do between now and this time or next year? I don't know. Your life is in total, total darkness. They could not see, neither and they saw not one another, neither lost any from his praise for three. Because you are rising from your praise to go where? You can't see. They didn't have no power. They didn't have no electricity. They, don't, they didn't have no spotlights. There was total darkness. And as a child of God, a time may come and you feel that God has released and commanded a stormy wind that you could not see. Paul is saying, back to the book of Acts, he is saying, for three days we could, and when neither, and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared. In other words, they couldn't see anything. And that is a child of God. That is you. And you feel like you can't see. Your life has not, doesn't have no meaning at all. And no small, and the Bible says, and no small tempest lay on us. All hope that we should be saved was then taken away. And you find this is a child of God. He said, me, I think my life has lost, lost meaning. I am hopeless. I am hopeless. I don't look forward for tomorrow because my life is hopeless. This is a child of God. When God has commanded a tempest, a stormy wind. Remember, I said this stormy wind, it comes with the two purpose one to judge and punish the wicked and number two to direct the godly and to manifest also the godly among the heathen to draw a line to make sure it is manifested that this is a child of God when the dust will have settled and the storm will have settled, then men will have known indeed you are a child of God. They would like to know how did you make it? How did you survive? Everybody else was destroyed or hurt, but you survived it. And I'm telling you, that storm, my brother, will make you better. Will even elevate you to a greater height and you'll be respected and recognized as a worshiper of God, a true worshiper or a worshiper of a true God. After the storm is calmed, after the sea is calmed, you will be referred to as a true worshiper, as a child of God that loves God. So a time comes that you feel your life is in total chaos. You can't make any, make any meaning to what is happening around your life, but you're still a child of God. God is still with you. God is still on your side. So Jonah is learning away in the book of Jonah, the first chapter. He thinks he can learn away from God. And God has sent, and the, but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. Could it be that you could be learning away from God? Could it be that you could be learning away from the call of God over your life, the assignment that God has called you? And God wants to give you, redirect you, and take you back to the course. To take you back to the call of God over your life. Could that be? One thing I know, it is not for your destruction. So it could be, it is to take you back to the course. Or it could be that after the dust is settled, you still be alive and strong. And people will know for in, indeed you serve God. And you shall return and discern who between who serve God and who doesn't serve God. And who is righteous and who is wicked. Could it be? And these people, the sea was troubled. Verse number five, the Bible is saying, then the Malinas were afraid. Not a child of God. The Malinas were afraid. These are the people, the heathen, the ungodly. They were afraid. They, they, they are wondering, why is this happening? This is not normal. 
Remember they knew the light time, the light season, even the day and the time they should embark on a voyage, on a sail. They knew. They had studied all this. Now, all of a sudden, things have changed. And they knew this is not normal. And they were afraid. They knew this is not normal. It is not something that is normal. Then the Malinas were afraid and cried every man unto his God. So they turned to their God. And like most David Paul did, they also started casting out, out some things out of the ship to make it lighter because I believe it was now getting in some water into the ship. And to avoid drowning, they started removing heavy things. They started and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it like Paul is doing in the book of Acts. But you see what? A child of God. <laughs> the Bible is saying, but Jonah was gone down into the side of the sides of the ship. And you know what he was doing? And he lay and was fast asleep. A child of God. When everybody else is complaining, when everybody else is afraid, Jonah knew God is in charge. Jonah knew. But in him he thought he is hiding. He is running away from God. But even there God was in the sea. And this sleep of Josh, Jonah. Now look at this. Put our finger there. Let's go to the book of Mark the fourth chapter. We see another storm. Job, Job Mark, Mark the third chapter. The fourth chapter and verse number 36. The Bible says, And when they had sent away the multitude. Today we said we are not preaching. We are Teaching the word of God. They took him even as he was in the sheep. That is Jesus Christ. And there were also with him other little ships. First number 37. And there arose a great storm of wind. God is in the storm. And God will have his way in the storm. Even here. When Jesus with his disciples are in the ship, God sent a stormy wind. And there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full of water. It was full of water. In other words, it is like they are losing hope. Like we said, there was no sun, there was no star for three days. None of, of them appeared. And your life lose as it were. Hope you lose hope. Sense of direction. And God wants to give you direction. God wants to guide you. First number 38. And the Bible says, And he was in the hinder part of the sea, like Jonah. Jonah was in the deep part, side of the sea, of the sheep. And he was in the hinder part of the sheep, asleep on a pillow. The same thing that Jonah was doing. But here I would like you to see the difference. The, the sleep of Jesus Christ was the sleep of confidence and faith. Jesus knew God will have his way in the storm. Jonah's sleep was the sleep of ignorance. And the sleep of fear. He was running away from God. And he didn't know that God would get him right there. So Jonah, his sleep, he was hiding. And like Jesus Christ, he was waiting. Because he knew God was in charge. So Jesus was just asleep. Relying on the confidence that he had in God. That God was in charge of the storm. And they are asking Jesus the same question. And they are saying they awoke him. They awake him. And said unto him. Master have you ever felt like. Your life is so messed up. You want, if you had power. You will go to heaven and knock the doors of heaven. And awake God. You think he is asleep. You awake Jesus. You think he is asleep. He is not aware. He said careless thou not that we perish. And they are saying to a deity. They are saying to the son of God. He is aware, but Jesus, the calmness, the confidence, 
that God will have his way in the storm. And I want to tell you, have this confidence of Jesus Christ that even that storm you're going through, God will have his way. And his way is either to redirect you and show with you the light way that you should follow or to manifest you in a greater way before men. That you indeed, you serve God. That when they return, they will discern who serveth God or who serveth him not. Who is righteous and who is wicked. This, they are waking up Jesus Christ and they're asking him, don't you care that we are perishing? Are you not careful that we are perishing? Are you not concerned? Back to the book of John, Jonah. We'll come back here again. Jonah chapter 1 and verse number 5. They are asking the same question. And the Bible is saying, Then the Malinas were afraid and cried every man unto his God. They were idol worshippers. Here God wants to use this storm to do, do two things. To manifest Jonah as a son of God or as a child of God who can never learn away from God. And number two is to win, to give Jonah the direction. And number two is to get these Malinas to worship the true God. The sailors. And cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea. To lighten it of them. But Jonah, like God, like Jesus, was gone down into the side of the ship. And he lay and was fast asleep but the sleep of Jonah was the sleep of fear and the sleep of ignorance and the sleep of learning away from God hiding from reality hiding from reality but the reality is will still remain you can never change the reality it is that God is still in charge and Jonah was on an assignment to go to Nineveh whether he slept is like a drunkard that will go to a tavern to drink his worries and cares away. And for a moment he may succeed when he will be out of his mind and he will take few bottles and he will forget all the cares and he will forget all the worries. He will forget all this, what he has been going through. But remember, the drunkenness will be over. Tomorrow morning, you are going to awake sober. And you'll find out the truth is the trouble is still with you. That which you are learning away from is still with you. You didn't successfully remove it from you. And Jonah, sleeping in the deep part of the sea, he thought by the time he woke up, God will have forgotten that he had given him an assignment. God will have forgotten and God will have taken another man to send to Nineveh. Because after all, I have looked for this man called Jonah and I cannot look, get him. So I have to look for another man. He, I don't know where he went to. He thought he can frustrate God. But I said, God will have his way in the storm. And the one way he wanted to have and he had was Jonah had to go to Nineveh. So they woke, verse number six, and the Bible is saying, so the ship masters, they were masters. These were people that were, they understood the sea better. But they did know there was a child of God right there that was learning away from God. A calamity can come to get this child of God's attention back to God. To get you back to the call of God. You say things are so hard. Yes, that is a storm. I don't know what is happening. No, ask God because God wants to achieve something. I don't, my life doesn't make sense anymore. Have no meaning at all. No, brother, George, Paul had the same three days. No sun, no stars, and they could not get nothing. The darkness was so great, they could feel it. They could touch it. They could not even see each other for three days and three nights. And then maybe that is where you are. But I thank God that three days and three nights will come to an end. Praise the name of the Lord. And he, he, the ship master came. The captain came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? When we are perishing, when we are almost perishing, you are here asleep. They didn't know Jonah was the cause. 
They did know Jonah was the very reason a storm was sent. So he said, Arise. At least they know. They knew Jonah was not a, an idol worshiper. They knew Jonah. And I thank God Jonah had already told them. Jonah had already told them why he is in the ship and why he is going to Nineveh. Jonah, or rather he is going to Tarshish, he had already told them that God had wanted him to go to Nineveh, but he didn't want to go. So Jonah, uh, he had revealed this to, these, uh, 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 to the sailors and he had told them why he was in that ship and when he was paying his fare. They, 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 they wanted to know, why are you going? And they, Jonah had to tell them. Because Jonah, verse number 10 of Jonah, chapter 1 and verse number 10, then were the men exceedingly afra afraid and said unto him, why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because Jonah had told them. And it's good to tell your testimony wherever you are. It is good to say who you are. And that is one credit that Jonah, we can give Jonah from the onset when he got into the sheep, he said who he was and what mission he was in. And he told them, I'm running away from God. Because he has sent me to go to preach in Nineveh and I don't want to go. So I want to go to Tashish and do some business right there. Tashish was a business city. So he wanted to go like people here. Some saying they want to go to Dubai for business. So this man, instead of yielding to the call of God, there he is running away. But he told them. So they knew. So when those things were happening, first number six, the shipmaster remembered. This guy, this guy had told us that he was running away. So, and all of us, we have called our God, and our gods, which are idols, have not responded. They have not answered. And the heathens, what they used to do, if they pray to their gods and their God don't respond, they would call for fallen gods still idols, and they will seek for their help. Now, this time, they remembered they had somebody else who have not talked to their God yet. So everybody that was there had called their gods, and nothing was happening. And they remembered Jonah, and they went to the, where he was asleep. He said, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. The same statement the disciples are asking Jesus Christ, you don't care that we perish. And you, as a child of God, you think God doesn't care. God, I want to remind you, he is in charge. He is the one in charge of whatever is happening in your life. He is in charge and God is saying he is bringing that storm into your life. The stormy wind is in your life as is in the world for God to receive something. To achieve two things. One, to judge the wicked. And number two, to make sure this child of God that have lost their way is brought back to their way. The light way they should follow. And number two, to make sure that they are manifested to be God's people. Praise the name of the Lord. So this man, he is saying, why? Why are you asleep? Why can't you rise up? Wake up and call on your God. Paradiventure, we may be saved because we are perishing. If nothing is done, we are going all of us to perish. And there was a conversation between uh, this man and Jonah. Verse number seven. And the Bible says, and they said, everyone to his Pharaoh, come. And let us cast lost lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is up. They knew, is there not a cause? Is there, when the, the brothers of uh, uh, Joseph uh, found Joseph in the battlefield, when he was sent to the battlefield to say, give them food, innocently sent by his father, go and take your bro brothers of food. And he found them in the midst of the battle. And when they saw Joseph, they started, as it were, rebuking him. 
telling him things. Why are you here? We know how you'd like to come to the battlefield. Don't you know? You are a weakling. You are a boy. You cannot handle this. And David answered them and said unto them. In First Samuel the 17th chapter, verse number 28, the Bible is saying, And Ariab his eldest brother heard what he spake unto the men. And Ariab's anger was kindled against David and said, Why comest thou down thither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? He said, I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. But look at the child of God that knows that God will have his way in the storm. God will have his way in every battle, in every wind, in every sickness, in every calamity, in every virus. God will have his way. And I want to tell you, my brother, God will have his way in whatever you're going through. Sister, God will have his way and he will achieve what he wants. Don't, don't charge God foolishly. Don't be like the wife of Job said, curse God and we die. No, Job, David answered and said, verse number 29, first Samuel the 17th chapter, verse number 29, and David said, what have I now done? Just to come, have I offended anybody by my coming? What have I now done? He said, is there not a cause? Anything is with a reason. Any storm, stormy wind, God is either one to direct the godly and to manifest them as his people or he want to punish the ungodly. And you are a child of God. The reason why you are listening to me is because you are a child of God. You are counted among the righteous. You are counted among the godly. And the calamity you are going through is not to destroy you, but it is to make you better. To manifest you in a greater way. Praise the name of the Lord. So you'll find now they are saying, what is the cause? Job, Jonah, the first chapter and first number seven. They are saying there must be a cause. And they said everyone to his Pharaoh, come and let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. They may know. Because God just don't just bring things. So the cast, the, they, they cast lots, lots and the lot fell on Jonah. A righteous child of God can never hide, can never run away. A child of God will never run away from God and they learn. They, it fell on Jonah, verse number 8, and the Bible say, Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is come upon us. For whose cause is this evil come upon us? What is thy occupation? What is the, your occupation? What do you do for a living? And where are you going? And why are you in this, in this sheep? And where are you, which country are you from? And of what people are you? Where, what is your, who are your people? Where are you coming from? And they are questioning Jonah to find out what kind of a man he is. They are questioning Jonah to find out. They, they, they are saying, help us to understand what kind of a person you are. And the conversation, Jonah uh, said exactly who he was, why he is there. He said, um, he said I'm an, an, an Hebrew and I fear God. That one, he never forgot to say that. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which have made the sea where we are and the dry land. So he said, I know God is here. I know God is in this. He says, I know God is in this. I know God is in control in the stormy wind. Verse number 10, he is saying, I know. Then were the men exceedingly afraid. Because Jonah had already told them who he was. Verse number 11, and the Bible is saying, Then said they unto him, What shall I do unto thee? That the sea may be come unto us for the sea, Lord, and was temptuous. In other words, what do we do with you? As a child of God, 
These are the ungodly. Verse number 12 is saying, what do we do? And he said unto them, take me up and cast me forth into the sea. Because he say, I know even God is in the sea. Right there, deep. He said, so shall the sea be come unto you. For I know that for my sake, this great tempest is upon you. And I said, God had to achieve two things. To give direction to Jonah. Take him back to his course. Number two, to win this man to him. First number 13. And the Bible is saying, nevertheless, the man vowed. The man, the Lord had to bring it to the land. But they, they, they still insisted. No, 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 we can save you. We, can't, we, we can make it to the land. But the more they tried, the more they failed. And they could not for the sea, Lord. And was verse number 14. And the Bible says, Wherefore, they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord. We beseech thee. Let us not perish for this man's life. And lay not upon his innocent blood upon us. For thou, O Lord, hast done it. Has done it. You are done as it pleases. They, they are saying, God, we are now acknowledged and we know these are heathens. And they are saying, we know, God, you are in charge. And we are throwing this man to the sea. But remember, we didn't want to throw him. It is because it is you who have done it. And pray, we pray that his blood will not be in our, in our hand. In other words, now they have now dropped their idols and they have turned to the true God. First number 15, they have turned to the true God and they cast Jonah to the sea. And immediately they did that, the sea ceased from her legend. Look at that. Jonah now has found his way. Remember, underneath, God had prepared a fish to swallow Jonah and he was vomited in Nineveh. And he went to preach. So what God wanted for this Jonah to be done, Jonah did it. It was done in the book of, in first, if I may jump, first number 17, uh, it says, uh, and now the Lord had prepared a fish uh, to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And Jonah found himself in Nineveh, chapter 3 of Jonah, first 1. And the word of the Lord came again unto Jonah the second time, saying, Elias, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the uh, and, and preach unto it the preaching that I bade thee. First number three. And so Jonah arose. This time he didn't quarrel, he didn't run away, because he knew God was in the storm. God was in the sea. And went into unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days. Journey first number four, four. And Jonah began to enter the city in a day's journey. And he cried and said. So he started preaching. So God has achieved number one thing. To redirect the life of Josh, Jonah. And you and me, whatever we are going through, is not to destroy it is to redirect and to take us back to our course. And you, my brother, you that asked me this question, sister, I want to tell you that is to take you back to God. That is to take you to the course. That you may know the way that you should follow. That you may know. So once that is done, then back to chapter 1, then the men now, first, uh, chapter 1, the men now, first number 15, the Bible is saying, so they took jo up Jonah and cast him into the sea, and the sea ceased from her alleging, first number 16. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly. So two things, as I said, God will have his way in the storm. The man Jonah now is in Nineveh, on his way to Nineveh to go and preach. The men that have remained in the, in, the, in the ship, the Bible is saying they feared God exceedingly and even offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and even made vows. They became believers. They became believers of the true God. They are no longer worshiping idols anymore. They found out their idols was not able to help them. They found out their idols were not able to help them. So they had to rely on the true God that Jonah worshipped. They had to rely on this God that is a true God. So Jonah has done what he was supposed to do. And the men have found the true form of worship. 
So God have his way in the storm. God have his way in the storm. So you find, then, then let me go back to the book of Mark, the fourth chapter. I'm asking this question. Then they, uh, first number, first number 38. And he, he was asleep and they went to him and said, don't you care that we fell, perish? First number 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind. Rebuked the wind. He had power. Now, that means God has power to speak to this wind and can respond. That, that stormy wind in your life will respond to the command of God. It will respond to the command of God. Or what you need to know to do is to know your way. The two things that God wants to do in that wind. Redirect you. Manifest you. And even make sure people know that you are indeed a child of God. And he arose and rebuked the wind. That is, they, the wind responded. Like it was given bidding to disturb the sea by God and it obeyed. Now when it is rebuked, it also obeyed and said unto the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And I'm telling you, my brother, that wind that stormy wind, it is coming to an end. Because it has to yield after God has achieved what he wants to achieve in the midst of the stormy wind. He will speak it. And he will speak to it and calmness. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And I am seeing calmness coming back in your life. I am seeing the stormy wind ceasing. Remember, don't complain. Don't run away. Don't be like Job's wife. No. Ask God, I want to learn the lesson. Quick and fast. That whatever you want to do, Lord, you do it. I, do, I learn it quickly so that you can rebuke this wind. It is God that is going to remove it. And when the wind was Calmed, first number 40. And they said unto, and he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? Brother, don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. Believe in God. He is in charge. The Lord, remember the book of Nahum, where we said, The Lord have his way in the storm. And in that storm you are going through, God will have his way. Don't fear. Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Have faith in God. It is coming to an end. Whatever wind, whatever stormy wind is blowing in your life, eh, however dark it is, my brother, the dawn is going to come and the stars are going to appear. The sun is going to appear once again in your life and there will be calmness. God is in charge. God is in charge. And Jesus is asking, why are you so fearful? And I'm asking you, why are you afraid? Don't be afraid. Hope and believe in God. You wait. You wait on the Lord. And when God has achieved his way and what you want to achieve in that stormy wind, he will just say, rebuke it. Peace, be still. And it will be. And I know it is going to be in your life. You that is listening to me, I know the stormy wind is coming to an end and your life will start having meaning, will have direction, will have the favor of God. You'll have the way to go. You'll know there is hope in your heart of tomorrow. And verse number 41, and the Bible says, and they feared exceedingly, like the marinas, the, 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 the ship master. They feared exceedingly. And said one to another, what manner of man is this? And I want to prophesy over your life. After the stormy wind is over your life, 
men will start questioning what manner of woman is this that these did not destroy them that these did not destroy this did not destroy them this stormy wind did not destroy them this sickness did not destroy them this calamity this virus didn't touch them what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him and this was a stormy wind sent so that Jesus can be manifested before people that indeed he has the deity of God that he is a God man he had the divinity he not only was he a God man but he not only was he having the, the body of the nature of Adam he was also having the divine nature and you have the favor of God over your life to be manifested to be demonstrated and closing I'll go to the book of back to the book of uh, Acts the 24 seventh chapter where we were and the Bible is saying first number 20 uh, the Bible is saying there was no, neither sun nor star for many days but first number 24 the Bible says Paul is speaking to them he says sirs fear not the same word that Jesus said where are you so afraid don't be a fearful Paul thou has been this is God now talking the angel talking to Paul is saying don't be afraid Paul thou must be brought before Caesar and Lord God has given thee all the men that sail with thee. none of them will get lost over 200 people over 200 people Paul was told none of them will die in Jonah's case none of them died None of them perished. In the case of Jesus Christ, none of the disciples perished. And I want to say that same God they believe in, that same God they served is the same God this man talking to you believe in and is serving. And I want to assure you, you are not going to be destroyed by that shipwreck. There is, you are not going to be destroyed by that stormy wind. You are not going to be destroyed by that calamity or that virus because God has revealed that none of them and none of you listening to me is going to be destroyed because God has given thee to me praise the name of the Lord don't worry you are not going to perish God have given them all the all them that sailed are you in the same boat with me if you're in the same ship with me my brother you are going to survive he said you are going to survive if you abide in the ship if you abide in the ship you are going to survive but if you step out of the ship you are going to perish no storm no stormy wind he says the first number thirty. the Bible is saying and as the shipmen were about to free out of the ship don't free don't don't cut and land don't leave church don't say this is too much. Don't say, like David was saying, I almost backslid. Don't backslide. Paul David said, I thank God I went to church. Go to the house of God. Switch on that preaching, preaching of that preacher. Brother, don't switch him off. Listen more. Read your Bible more. Pray more. When they were about to get out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea under the under Kara, as though they would have cast archers out of the ship for a ship, first number 31. Paul said unto the centurion and to the soldiers, except these are bind in the ship, you shall or you cannot be saved. Your safety is not running away. The safety of the men that were in Jonah was not in jumping out of the ship. It was staying in the ship. The solution was in the ship. The solution was not out. The solution was in. Their safety was in the ship. The disciples, their safety was not in jumping out of the ship. Their safety was staying in the ship because in the ship Jesus was there. In the ship, Jonah was there. In the ship, Paul was there. In the ship, the preacher man is there. So it doesn't matter the stormy wind. It doesn't matter the tossing up and down of the ship as long as you are bind in the ship. Brother, I want to encourage you that you may abide in the ship. 
and you are going to get to the shore safely. All of you, you are going to stay safe. So that stormy wind, my brother, I'm saying, shall not make you leave church. Shall not make you doubt God. No. Stay. Because God has to receive and achieve what you want to achieve in that stormy wind. And I say number one is to judge the wicked. And number two is to redirect you as a child of God to find your way. And number, three, and number C, number part B, part A, B of that is to manifest you before the ungodly. For you to be known that indeed you are a true child of God. And all of them, the last verse of that verse, number 44, the Bible is saying, and all of them, all of them, and, uh, and the rest, some on boats, and some on the broken pieces. So what it means, even the lacking of the sheep does not lack the purpose of God over your life. The sheep may be wrecked, but your life and the purpose of God over your life can never be destroyed or wrecked or be thwarted. The stormy wind may destroy the sheep, but not a child of God. And some on broken pieces of the sheep. And so it came to pass that they escaped all. Hallelujah. All, even you. Even you that was developing some doubts. Even you that was developing some fear. You are going to escape if you stay. That stormy wind is not to destroy you. And they, that they escaped all safe to the land. So, if there was any doubt about Apostle Paul's call of God and hand of God over his life, it was solved by that. Because everybody was saved. And chapter 28 and verse number 4, the Bible is saying, chapter 28 and verse number 4, the Bible says, And when the barbarians saw the venomous, because when they came, verse number 3, And when Paul had gathered a barn of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened it on his hand. First number three, four. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, listen to this, no doubt this man is a murderer. Look at that. You know why they say that? He said, whom? Though he had escaped the sea, Yet, the vengeance, of, the vengeance suffereth not him to leave. Why? Because they thought and they had concluded the poison of the viper was going to kill Apostle Paul. And they are saying, and, and that is a child of God. Today you are in this trouble. God saves you. Tomorrow you will be another one. God will still save you. The God of the valley is still God in the mountain. The God of the day is still the God in the night. And when things go wrong, he has always done them well. He will make them well for you. He will make them light for you. So whether it's in the night, whether it's in the sea, whether it's in the, in the, in the, in the viper uh, fastening itself on your hand. And you know what a child of God did? Because that storm wind will just bring God's glory. And you be recognized. And verse number five, the Bible is saying, and he, and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. You are not going to be harmed. You are not going to be hurt. That stormy wind will leave you a better child of God. You live, it will leave you a better faithful individual in the house of God and in the kingdom of God. You'll, you'll continue uh, serving God in a greater way. You'll continue abiding in the house of God in a greater way because the viper will be thrown in the fire and the, the, the stormy wind will come to an end and this child of God will continue serving God. Verse number six, the Bible says, uh, how be it they looked, they, they looked when he should have fallen or fallen down dying suddenly but after they had looked a great while 
and saw no harm came to him, they changed their minds. Hallelujah. And all your enemies will change their mind. The disciples of Jesus Christ said, what manner of man is this that even the wind can hear him? The sailors with Jonah, they said, what kind of a man is this that his God can hear and stop the stormy wind? And they believed God. They appreciated the God of Jonah. The disciples believed in the God of Jesus Christ. They changed their mind. And your enemy, them that had written you off, and they say that you are dead and gone, and you, you, you never rise up again, they will see you rising up again and not dying as they expected him to fall down and die. They saw him in good health and in sound mind and high spirits, and they changed their mind, and they said that he was a God. Hallelujah. They say he was a God. They will see it didn't destroy you. You didn't perish and you're still on the face of the earth. You're still praising God. You're still able to provide for your children and your family. You're still able uh, to go to work. You're still able to put food on the table. And they will change their mind and say for sure this man is like a God. And instead now of uh, uh, castigating you, first number 10, let me close with that. Instead of doing that, uh, he said they honored them with many honors and they will honor you after the storm is over after the battles are won after the diseases are healed people will honor you and even when they were departing they landed us with much things as were necessary they gave them a lot of gifts they gave them in other words to honor and to appreciate them as the people of God a man that they expected to be destroyed by the stormy wind in the high seas. God saved him. And you are going to be saved out of that stormy wind in your life. And even when the viper fastened it on your hand, you are not going to die. God will preserve you. And people's mind will be changed. And they will know, indeed, you are a child of God. So this stormy wind in your life is to reveal you and manifest you as a child of God. To the people that have been doubting about your faith, have been doubting about your God, have been doubting about your salvation, they will see the hand of God preserving and keeping you safe and they will change their mind. So the stormy wind, my brother, you that ask this question, my sister, is that, that it will be over. And after it is over, it is over the doubters, they are going to have their mind changed. And they will know for, in, for sure you serve a God who is able to save. You serve a God who is able to deliver. You serve a God who is able to heal. And once they do that, they will change their mind towards you. And they, for Paul, they say, this is a God. For Jesus, they said, what manner of man is this? That even the wind can hear him. For Jonah, they wondered, what kind of a man is this that his God can disturb the whole sea for just the sake of one man? So, I want to close by telling you, Nahum chapter 1, verse number 3, that the Lord, the Lord will have his way. The Lord have his way in the storm. In that storm, God have his way. In that storm, it will be over. It will be rebuked. It will be done. But you still be on the face of the earth, praising God, having a smile on your face, thanking God and worshiping him. And the doubters and the, the heathen will know that for sure you are a child of God. They will change their mind. God bless you. God bless you. God be with you. And I want to pray for you and with you. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you have given us your word. You have said that God, you have your way in the storm. Even whatever that child of God is going through, not only did you, God, permit it to come, but Father, you are in control of it, O God Almighty. And at the end of it, O Jehovah, you will glorify your name. You will, Jehovah God, magnify your name. Dear Father, I pray that God, you may strengthen that brother. My God, even as Paul prayed when there was a thorn in the flesh in his body, he sought for your answer three times. But God, you assured him, your grace 
will be sufficient for him. I pray that God, Lord, you give that brother, this sister, sufficient grace that they may be able to go through this storm still holding on your promises, still holding on your word. Let not them lose their faith and their confidence in you. Let no fear lean over their lives. But dear God, let them, Father, hold on your word, O God Almighty. For soon and very soon, the stormy wind will be rebuked, will be over. And dear God, they will be settled. Uh, they will have peace in their lives. Their lives will have direction and meaning. My God, I pray, lead them by your way, O God Almighty. By your hand, O Jehovah Master. In the name of Jesus the Christ, that dear God, as, as it is over, when it is over, Jehovah God, our people will have changed their mind and they'll say, indeed, this is a child of God. Indeed, this is a believer. They'll say, indeed, these have God with them. Father God, I thank you for you brought it with a reason and with a cause. And that is to glorify your name and to manifest them as God's people. Father God, I thank you in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, brethren. God be with you. And I pray that God will give you the understanding of these teachings that we have had like here. That your faith may be more on God, on his promises. And he will have his way on that storm that is in your life. He will have his way in that sickness that is touching you, in that pain, in that condition you are going through. God will have his way. May God bless you. God keep you and will be seeing you again. God be with you. Thank you and thank you. Amen and amen.